<laughs> this is a director. I, you look good. Why, why are we doing this? Why are we not in front of a window? We need the... <laughs> yeah. I'm in front of a window. <laughs> it's just, I'm it's like you're in, a sh- in the shade. You're just hanging out in the shade. Look at all We're of our good. faces. <laughs> it's weird. I it's need like... you to flag that 10K and bring it <laughs> to the Cardellini. <laughs> what? Here we go. Oh, wait. There's just like a little glow. There we go. There we oh, go. okay. I see what you're doing it's there. Did you put? Did you okay. lay the lamp on his side and now it's bouncing up to you? Uh, no, it's just straight up. Uh, he's, very, he's got like a white sheet bouncing. all around him <laughs> for a little under eye bounce. Oh he's my fully god. set himself up. Hi. <laughs> Oh my god, Hi. my favorite people in one place. Oh, this is so I special. I oh. love you, my com- my future commune livers. Uh, we're we're doing it, <laughs> especially after the text that you sent me. How crazy it is that you guys are in Malibu right now. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like that, we're not there with you is just surreal. I know. I know and by the time we get back, we're gone. We're out. I know. I know. I hope you get house. a renter so that you have to be, you have to stay for August. I know. Well, they were, they were like, oh, we want to extend. And then I was like, oh. And you're then, like, okay. And then they extended just for a week. I was like, okay. Uh, like, no, <laughs> but we're here for there all of August. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Daisies, welcome to our hundredth episode of the Mother Days. Woo woo! That's unbelievable, you guys. A hundred episodes. I know. I know. It is unbelievable. It is it's nuts. Really wild. I remember them saying like, there's like a group of people at the beginning that were like, oh my gosh, when you guys get to 40 episodes, it's going to feel so crazy because you're going to look back and be like, what were we doing at the beginning of this? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember and my weird Halloween <laughs> ideas? Where oh my God. <laughs> it was just like, ghost stories. <laughs> but people actually missed that. This, oh, look who's coming to say hi on the 100th episode. Danny, I'm going to let Danny say hi really quick so she can hear because everyone was re- literally we put a thing everyone. out and we're like, so what do you want to hear from Eric and Mark? And they were like, we want to actually hear from Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, I actually pushed out a baby. Those guys did it. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Danny. So hi hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. This is such a nice surprise for our daisies because every dm is like oh my god we're so excited about the guys what what about um if is it possible to get danny and i I dm (laughs) someone back last night i was like all right we're gonna see what we can do and then sarah this morning was like she's gotta pop in thank you so much for being such a big part of this everyone loves you and the stories that you shared was so deeply meaningful and I think incredibly inspiring to our listeners. You were so candid talking about your birth stories and um, you're just a ray of sunshine. Thank you so much for popping well, in. I want to I want to thank you two ladies for the platform um, because this is such an easy place to be honest and candid about everything, both the positive and the negative, and how to how to turn the negative into a positive, um, and how to grow from every single experience. And the fact that you ladies have started this podcast, I know you can't hear anything that they're saying. It's but great. <laughs> it's fine. You can hear me, and you can hear that I love you, and I'm so proud of you. And I just remember thank so well um, when you guys were just talking about it, and the fact that you've not only made it happen, but you've gotten to a hundred episodes, which is incredible. Ah! Eric and I know what that feels like. <laughs> you yeah. do. Very different level. You know what it feels like to get to 300 episodes. <laughs> yeah, but a hundred is a huge feat. Like it, that's, that's, that's a huge round, amazing number. And the fact mm. that um, people care about what you have to say. And like I said, the platform you give moms, parents in general is incredible. Thank I'm so you. proud of both of you. Really. Thank, Thank you for While so you're on here and it's being recorded, you should just like, acknowledge that back. you're going to do another episode. <laughs> oh, we can't. That's what I just, I literally just said that. Sarah said the same thing, he which is that you have to do another oh. episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about a couple. There you go. Um, yes, I would love to come do another episode. Okay, great. Right. Sarah had told me about it. Um, so, yeah. Amazing. Yay. That'll make the masses happy. Right. <laughs> awesome. The best. Well, I'm going to go work the mom bod and leave you guys to <laughs> it and say... So I'm in my gym wear. Work on that I booty. Jogged. I jogged on the way here. Right. Oh it. my gosh. <laughs> nice. Of course, those apple rings. Are you going to the gym or you're going to work out of the house? No, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to run to the gym now because Dave is there and he's taking too long and I don't want to wait anymore. 
So I dropped off my kids <laughs> at your house and now I'm going. Great. That's a mom inspiration right there. There's like 47 well, nice children have a downstairs. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With two grandparents. It's nice to have a village. That's why it's good to have a Yeah, village. for sure. Um, so mwah, I love you guys. Mwah. Love you. Thank you so <laughs> much for popping on. on. Thank Thank you. You. Bye, Danny. Danny. Love you. Love oh you too. Oh my gosh. She's such an inspiration. Oh my God. No, it's so That's cute. So cool, oh my God. That was so cool. So that was for you guys, Daisies, because yeah, you have right. been, I, I have so many messages messages on my phone like Danny Danny can we hear from Danny <laughs> so there she was how long is she there for you guys um, are they there the whole time yeah we're, we're here for a month together so they're all in That's Idaho amazing. for people we're listening. in Idaho doing our family thing I love it it's the best I was looking photos from 2019 oh. of us being out there which feels like it was yesterday I know but well because of like, fourth of July we were like doing fireworks yes. That's right. I know. Um, my baby. It was 2019. Yes. 2019. How insane was my that? My baby Terrifying. laughed for the first time on your oh couch in your lounge room, baby poet. That was that weird period of time where Eric sort of forgot that I had had another baby. And then That's right. we saw each other after COVID <laughs> and then I had baby Prairie. And then he saw poet and he was like, wait, where did that one come from? <laughs> <laughs> That's so Eric. <laughs> and I was like, that is probably is, a direct quote. Uh, literally, you're like, I didn't even know she what? existed. There's another yes, one. Yes, yes. It was yeah. so funny. I relate to that. I relate to that. I totally relate I know, to that. No, we can't keep up. Um, but yeah, that was a really magical time. And, you know, we always talk about us guys, commune living and some of my favorite moments in life have been trips we've taken together when we went to Spain and we have just the best photos. We had the most amazing time. We were just cooking, having wine at nighttime, having deep and meaningfuls after the kids were in bed and just having this chilled, amazing, deeply connected time. And I've been really craving doing that again with you guys. Um, Sarah, we've been plotting. Mark and I had this idea of a road trip, remember? what we said about but he's like we got to get a tour bus oh yeah a tour bus, bus all of a, us a full-on tour bus in the bus and then towing a couple suvs Can but you at this point i think we might need like two tour buses <laughs> and towing two SUVs. or maybe we'll pull um, like an airstream and then you guys can drive like go. a tour bus and then we'll just go to different places i mean i've had people sending um spots that they're hitting up like campgrounds and stuff all throughout this summer and i'm like wow oh, there's no. like so many places to go and see uh, that we haven't seen in the u.s it's nuts that's yeah. actually worth putting out into the world which is that if we do do a road trip yeah and i think it's you know have one of these companies like thor or somebody that you know has these beautiful rvs that can fit the 35 children <laughs> that we all have <laughs> and then like hit hot spots of like people's favorite campgrounds and pa- favorite places to go yeah. in the u.s and canada oh, and God, maybe do, do some daisy meetups oh, in yes. any small little yeah, town that's a great idea yeah we can we can go and do some meetups with the daisies yeah slip into the dm you, you did in san francisco but in different cities yeah i know so tour. Yes, yes exactly that's our plan we're just trying to uh figure out dates but our plan is definitely to do more of those and it was such a huge success it It was was. so amazing you guys can do a podcast mark can do he can teach movie making i can take care of the ice cream (laughs) (laughs) just wear no sleeves around the no uh, you uh (laughs) those are my people You'll be producing, you know, you can produce. Mark will direct. Teresa and I will. And you be training. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, can you, you finally <laughs> get Teresa into an ice bath? Yeah. Oh my like, God. Uh, someone has to get, if anyone can get her in an ice um, bath, it's you. Mark, like, can you please tell these guys? Because I know they'd be very proud of yes, me. Yes, it has been amazing. Her working out has been incredible. And the cool thing about the workouts is that she's motivated Bodhi. Mm. And it's the sweetest thing, you guys. She has Bodhi in there lifting weights, swinging a kettlebell around. And the two of them, they do their daily workouts together. And it's amazing. And I like, how cool is that? I mean, you know, That's Eric, it. you get That's everything doing stuff. It's, it's amazing. Like to have a 10 year old who is interested in Health. working out yeah. is the best feeling in the world. So he, he yeah. is like, 
he loves the feeling when we've completed it. And he was like, I just feel so strong. I feel so clear. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm like, I have this little workout buddy where we're high-fiving each other, like after we do a little set. And he does like a lot lower weights, obviously, because I don't, he try. he, he wants strong to do flex, some of the big ones. Said, strong flex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was, I was like, wait, <laughs> I was like, wait, you need to not be, <laughs> he's trying to lift the same weights that I am. And I'm like, you're a 10 year old little dude. Like we don't need to be doing that yet. He's pretty close. He's pretty close. Yeah. Guys. But he's one below it's me. True. He's one, but we, we got to keep it safe. Just, anyway, just he's really, like, okay, it's not a competition. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. No, because I can see all the people out there being like, what? Like this little kid is lifting all these heavy weights. I'm like, he's not. He's lifting small little weights. Every time that we talk about uh, fitness and like, you know, this movement and all these things that I think are just so awesome and great and healthy and scientifically proven to be amazing for your life. Um, I do hear some of the comments that we've had, which is like, oh, you know, they're so, they don't even realize they're like tapping into diet culture, talking about like fitness. And I don't see it that way because no. for us, it's not diet culture. Like we eat super nourishing meals. I eat all day long. For me, it's about what makes me feel the best. And what makes me feel the best is starting my day, getting my blood flow going. And even if it's like a 20 minute workout. So it's not like I'm doing something crazy and then going from this thing to this thing to this thing. I was feeling like, I was like, oh, why would I want to work out? Like I am a tired, busy mom. I don't Mm -hmm. have time to work out. Like I'm taking care of my kids. Like at what point in the day am I going to go off and work out? Like this was my thinking. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm gearing up to do IVF. Like I want to just get in the healthiest place possible. Shifted. And I have to say for anyone out there who's like, oh gosh, I just don't, don't have the energy. I now have more energy. I have more energy. I've, I've never felt better. I'm like just waking up that's so refreshed and I'm only taking 40 minutes of my day to do a little workout plus being super on top of just filling my body with nourishing foods, not making as many of the junky choices that I was making before. And I'm telling you, I feel like a new person. So I'm glad you said that, Sarah, because it really is all about health and longevity. And I've got so many kids and I want to stick around for as long as possible. So I'd love to just like, because we brought this up, like, just kind of punt that over to you two because I think you guys like study this stuff and Eric, you listen to like all these amazing podcasts about it and about wellness and all of that. So for yes. anybody listening, who's like, Oh, this is like, you know, this, this is annoying or this is diet culture or whatever. Like, what would you say to that? Well, yeah, it's, I mean, I, it, well, Sarah, what you were saying also makes me think of a, a few other things of like, it must be super challenging when you have a public platform to speak your truth and then get criticism no matter what, right? It's like when you're a public person and you're doing something in the public, it's like we can't please everybody, you know? And that stuff is hard, you know? Babe, just you the other day with a post that you had and no matter what it is, there's always somebody who's going to say something, you know? and I think what's cool is, is that we're all people that can take genuine criticism and we're open to it and make an adjustment. Um, But we're also able to like pinpoint and know when something's just like trolling and hating, which is so much of the internet. Um, But yeah, I don't look at what we're doing at all about being anything diet culture. It's just getting healthy and getting our kids motivated to want to move their bodies is such a good thing, especially in, you know, a day and age where for a lot of families, they're struggling with just pulling their kids away from a screen, you know? And it's like nothing can feel as good as that dopamine hit from that screen for a lot of these kids. And so just getting them back out into nature moving their bodies and, you know, retraining their brains to get these dopamine hits from being physical is beautiful. And that's really all we're doing, you know? Perfect description. I think 
yeah, you know, no matter what, sometimes getting healthy is really triggering for some people, you know, like when they see other people really getting healthy, I think if they are not themselves, it stirs up a lot of stuff for them. You know, it's like, and then the tendency is to kind of want to nitpick or attack what, you know, in reality, what we're doing is just, it's so good. It's so good to just get out and move, you know, and then to do it with your family. It's the best. It's the best feeling. Yeah. I think that's something worth unpacking, which is just this idea of shared experience. Uh, You know, you don't need me to talk about why working out is good for you and for your kids, because there's a thousand podcasts. All you have to do is Google it and you'll have every reason you have to work hard at this point to avoid the realities of how important that type of physical movement is, in, including for kids. And you look at obesity rates in America, like it's horrifying where we're headed. But I don't need to speak to that. I do think that the thing that I most celebrate in what you said was that it's hard to find shared experiences when we're competing for time. Like you think about how busy you guys are, how busy our kids is, the schedules that they have that to have a shared experience that's that healthy to get up and work out in the morning. And I don't think it has to be 40 minutes. There's some days where I look at Sarah and I was like, how you feeling? And she'll, we'll do 15, we'll do 20 minutes. Um, But those memories of your son looking at you doing something hard, right? That we can do hard things and we're sweating um, and you're getting after it. um, I think that's incredible. And there's now so much scientific evidence that shows, especially for kids, the ability to have, we call it a rock and roll list, like a series of tasks that need to be done as they get up. It's just the mindset of like, our kids get up. And have you talked about this in the podcast, Sarah? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So they got to vacuum, they got to make their beds, um, feed the dogs, unload the dishwasher. And they just get up and immediately get into that mindset of like, I don't want to do these things, but they're also necessary as a part of this community. And they just start knocking them out. And it becomes not an emotional response. It becomes like almost a logistical response of like next, 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 next to get to that whatever's necessary to, to be a part of the community. And I think putting something physical in that space, like working out and watching their parent who has no time and is exhausted because he or she's working so hard, say, this is important to me and it's hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. I think, you know, consciously, subconsciously physiologically, psychologically, all those things are so important. I think it's awesome. Totally. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think you said something interesting about the shared experience. Um, I, I sent this book, we've got a thread, and I sent this book last night, Hold On To Your Kids by Gordon Neufeld and Gabor Mate. Um, and somebody sent this to me who listens to the podcast. Uh, oh, cool. Shout out to Mama of Luna. Um, Yay. <laughs> and she was like, I've changed everything since I listened to this. Um, and, you know, it, it's really sort of unpacks the idea of attachment theory, but how knowing your kids so well and holding on to your children. And I was listening to the book last night. I've been listening at, to it at nighttime right before I go to bed. And they talk about how it's so easy to lose the connection once they're in school and they're making friends and then peers are raising peers, which doesn't work. No one can really teach you how to mature when they're the same age as you. It used to be that we were always looking to our parents for for that advice and, and the way to grow, but now we're turning to each other. And you see that in teenagers and This book really beautifully unpacks all of it. But even just having these shared moments with Bodhi where that is the thing that we do together and we're talking to each other. And then after we work out just to like do a cool down, when we walk around the block and we're just chatting with each other, I'm really getting to talk to him in a way without the distraction of other siblings or another parent. And I'm I'm getting in there. And he said... I said to Sarah, I had this like really momentous experience with him in when we were in Ireland, he put his arm around my shoulder and was like, mom, you are my best friend. I can tell you anything. And I was like, oh, Um, and I said, I I tried to play it really cool. I was like, oh, buddy, that just makes me so happy. And I want you to be able to talk to me about anything at all. 
Um, and I and said, inside you were like, oh my I was God. Like, oh, <laughs> like having a full freak out. And I was like, these are the relationships we have to hold on to with our kids because when they're off in the world and they're getting older and they're trying to be cool, they're trying to fit in, it's very easy to lose that connection with them um, as their peers become more and more important. It's true. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a doozy, you guys, having a, a 16-year-old. I was just thinking you know? that. You, <laughs> you're so in it. You have a full-on 16-year-old. It's so wild. I mean, because it's true. It, you do want to you want to hold on to them. You want to be their everything for as, as long as possible, you know? And then there's the reality of, like, they are going to also get so much from their peers. And so it's super important to know their friends and be a part of their friend groups and know their parents of, you know, their friends. And because the reality is there is so much that they're going to get from them. There's only so much we can control it to a certain extent. Um, And then, yeah, that's just amplified when you have a teenager. It's like, wow, here's, you know, here's this person who was a little guy, it feels like just yesterday, who is now a full on adult, it feels like. And, and it's interesting to see that dynamic in the shift within our family, you know, um, and how that impacts Bodie and Forest and Poet and Prairie, um, to see their, their brother, their other little, you know, posse member um get older and what that looks like you know and and starting to make decisions that continue to bring him out of the house not back with us um and uh it's it's hard it's sad sometimes for me just as a dad so i want them together all the time but it's also really cool to sit with like oh yeah this is what happens you know and I think it's cool to see certain things modeled to his younger siblings. It kind of gives them the jump on what's ahead for them in a way, you know? Um, yeah, but it's, it's a lot. Can you pinpoint the most like contrasting, whether it's POV or whether it's value, that you find yourself struggling to implement that's, you know, contrasted by his friends or other people in his life, like the thing that's at the center of that for you? You know, it's a good question. I think like, I think we're pretty lucky because there isn't a big glaring one right now. You know, his friend group is super solid um and there's no big contrast in terms of you know things that i believe and and things that he believes they're all we're all kind of really aligned in a way i think the thing that's the hardest is just all the typical stuff of being cool like all the self-esteem stuff is just so magnified and it feels like so sudden where does he find that self-worth and identity he finds it with himself in really positive ways predominantly like he he really values his intellect and learning a lot um, That's great which has really kept him i think grounded and helps kind of stave off all this temptation. I need to be cool mm-hmm. thing, yeah. you know, and all these other bad temptations that are out there. He really values keeping his mind sharp and wanting to learn and continue to learn and learn and learn and become smarter and smarter. Um, and he chose going to a high school that was really challenging as opposed to the, the social high school that he could have gone to. So that was great. You know, it was already clear, like, okay, cool, you're making really awesome decisions. Um, But, you know, girls and love stuff starts to come in. And suddenly it's like, you know, that feeling of like, oh, wow, are you going to risk it all? Are you going to throw it all away here because of a new budding relationship? And I, it's like, 
it, I, I, we can all relate to that. I mean, the you answer know, is yes. First... <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Hello. Right? That's like, what it. <laughs> when you, well, it's so crazy because we all have our our version of that, right? Of like when you fall for someone or you become attracted to someone in a really big way and you start to lose a part of yourself, you know, and, and it's, it's just so interesting to be, you know, an observer of what that is. And of course the self-reflection loop that you get kind of stuck in is it's just wild. He's doing such a good job. I I keep thinking about myself at 14, myself at 15, myself, like, Already, he's like miles ahead of the choices that I was making totally. at that age. <laughs> I was like, woo, getting drunk with my friends at like 15, 16, like on the streets, like drinking Bacardi and not going home, like sleeping at boyfriend's houses. I mean, I was a terror. He's not doing mm-hmm. any of that, which is really beautiful. He really Thank cares God. about I school. I was like, fuck school. Like I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't care about it. I was like, screw my Catholic school. Like I don't want to go. Um, and then I look at Isaac. I love the voice you make for yourself when you're <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fuck this. Yeah, fuck this. I'm just like, yeah, foot loose and fancy yeah. free, mate. Woo. Um, but yeah, I was, I was a terror. And then I look at Isaac and he's straight A's. He's on the debate team. He's traveling around America doing his debates. And I'm like, this kid is killing it. And I, it's funny. Yeah. I would say like one of the things I noticed with Mark and, and Isaac is that a couple of things, I think some of Mark's own wounds with your relationship with your own dad and how, what that dynamic was like. And, you know, if people listen to the first podcast with Mark, you know that, um, Mark had an absent, so beautiful, by the way, so beautiful. Um, you know, Mark had an absent father. And I think that I notice that sometimes that comes into the relationship with Isaac and that can affect it in some ways. Um, but in a beautiful way of Mark wanting to make sure that he's showing up and he's being there for Isaac and he's a present dad and, all of those things, which I'm sure as Isaac's peeling away, is getting older and peeling away, that brings up stuff too. And then the second thing I noticed is that Mark's got this really beautiful, this is why actually my favorite thing about you, Mark, is like you have this unbelievable openness to the possibilities of the universe. You believe anything could be possible. Anything is real. You, you know, you, this is a guy I'm like, are you into manifesting? He's like, yes, I'm into manifesting. I love it. (laughs) Yes. I'm into the universe. Yes. I believe these things. Yes. And yes. And yes. And like all the different possibilities. You're really super open-minded and I can talk to you about all these things. And I love that. Um, and I think, Isaac has more of, he has a different approach. The way he sees things is different. He's less open-minded to you. He has his ideas and structures. And that I find quite entertaining to watch (laughs) the Mark (laughs) Isaac conversation surrounding those things where it's like they just won't always see eye to eye. And it's fascinating, especially because Isaac's so good at debating as well, that I'm like, wow, how I... Oh, you can't get, yeah. It's, yeah. It, don't ever get into an argument with Isaac at this point. It's like, you're you done. You will never um, win. Well, I want to see Eric and Isaac go head to head because I, I Eric is also a great debater. <laughs> yes. Eric and Isaac together on any topic would be amazing. <laughs> We may agree on a lot, though. I bet we agree true. on a lot. That's You probably yeah. would. Oh, you, you totally would. You totally would. <laughs> Healthy skepticism. I know. Wait, I want to hear from you guys. Like, Sarah, Eric, yes. like, how is it for you watching your little ones get older? Like, what is it? It's, it's, it's been a lot for me recently, mm. you guys. Like, I, and I swear, I spend hours sometimes just looking at photos that's the most time that I spend on my phone nowadays is I just I just can't believe it like I was saying earlier you know looking 2019 felt like yeah yesterday and just all being together and having the fourth out there with you guys and 
and now it's suddenly like they're little adults. How are you guys doing with it all? I would say that the 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 one that really gets me is the oldest at this point, you know, is Wyatt because um because he was our first baby. And so like, I always think about how you think about like how precious you were with your first and how everything was like, Oh my God, like, don't hit that. You know, I was like such a worrying about him getting hurt, you know, mother. And then like, you know, there's all these different phases that they go through. And then the second child comes in and then you realize like those first that for us, the first three years of his life, it was just the three of us. And then we had Esme, but like those first three years, like was such a really important and, and, you know, pivotal time where we built this bond with Wyatt in our own ways. And then looking at him now, it like, there's just little things like talking to him about literature or like watching him, you know, work on his math or like having a discussion about a podcast that we've listened to or, you know, him wanting to go on a date with me after school. And, you know, and part of partly because he really wants to get something delicious from Erwan. <laughs> but the other part is like we chat, you know, and that's like really fun too. And um, I told Eric, like it almost killed me every day last year at school. And I think it's because of what you're saying of his age um, is that when he would come out of school, he would run out and like run full sprint run right into my arms and give me like the biggest hug in front of everyone, friends, teachers, like everyone, every, you know, his teachers are always like, Oh my God, why? When he would do that, but he would just give me the biggest hug, be like, I missed you today. And I'm like, I missed you too. And, you know, we'll just like walk and chat and, um, it just like kills me because he's getting tall. And so I'm just like, think about him as an adult and I'm like, ah, oh, he's getting so big. And, mm. um, I don't know. It's like bittersweet because it's really fun. The things that we're experiencing with him are really fun and really beautiful. Um, but you know, then it's also like those little days are so precious too. How do you feel about it, Eric? I mean, I'm sure maybe Sarah told this story in the podcast, but so in the big, beautiful bed that's, you know, organic and made by Tibetan monks and <laughs> <laughs> we have this unbelievable bed. I don't sleep in that bed. So it's, Esme, Sarah, and then the, the baby would go sideways and kick me. And so eventually I was just like, I'm just going to sleep on the floor. And then we have a trundle bed. So Wyatt has a proper, beautiful bed that's a single, right? So it's called a single. Yeah, I think so. And then so. underneath it is a horrifyingly thin trundle bed. <laughs> yeah. That's where I sleep. <laughs> so I, at the night, I pull out the little trundle bed and I sleep there. It's basically like sleeping on a cot. <laughs> I'm basically sleeping on a cot. Every night. I did 300 episodes of crime television to sleep on a cot. Oh my God. <laughs> but the most beautiful part of that is that every night before we fall asleep, we get to have that conversation, Teresa, where you're on that walk after the thing. It's literally just him and I, and the world has slowed down and the lights are off and I'm about to fall asleep and we get to have those conversations that I can barely even articulate now because I have tears in my eyes. And when he turned, <clears throat> when he turned nine, I realized that I was halfway for him going to college. And I remember him saying that, He's like, when do I go to college? I was like 18. He was like, I'm halfway there. And I remember just like tears running down my cheeks as I realized how spectacular and fleeting it all is. Um, and so I, you know, I think that these moments that y y you look at your phone, Mark, and it feels like it was yesterday and it was five years yeah. ago. Um, it's overwhelming. Um, um and I do listen to to friends that are just like, oh, I just can't wait for them to get out of the house. And I, I do recognize yeah. like <laughs> high school is a much more complex situation than a 10 year old. Um, but he, you know, the the doubling down on those shared experiences. One of my favorite things we do now is I read him off uh, the daily podcasts. I said, here's the topics you choose one and he'll choose one. And we will sit there and listen to a podcast together and then talk about the Wall Street Journal journalist uh, that's uh, been arrested and on trial in Russia. And he'll ask all these questions. And I just get so stoked 
to have, mm. you know, these conversations with our, our kid. Like yes. it's just surreal to me. And it also echo- echoes, I think the time that as I again, celebrate the moments that we get to share with these kids, we had a dentist that was 35 minutes away. And my dad was so busy. He was an English professor. He was a track coach. He was a cross country coach. But for some reason, we drove 35 minutes to get to this dentist. And I still remember those car rides where it'd just be him and I for 35 minutes, just talking about the world and life and love and, and everything that, you know, that mattered then that matters now that we get to, you know, continue to communicate in that cycle with our own kids. I mean, it's just, it's all of it is, um, it's overwhelming. And I, uh, I wrote a post when Wyatt was one, which is as I read back now, just how spot on it was, which is that I think that people weep at milestone moments because it's the only kind of chapters that we recognize the passing of time, which is why we find ourselves clutching perches and holding keys and weeping at things like graduation, because all of a sudden it just happened. And it's a recognition of all of that time that has flown by that we've just lost in the insanity and chaos of the world. Yeah. So that's my response to that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah. I think everyone can relate. It's like we all, we all just have to really cherish these moments and stay, you know, and just cherish every moment because it does, it does go by so fast. It's so funny. All the, all the parents before us that would say, Oh, go so fast happens like this. And it's so true, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing now. Like, thinking in my head wow i'm gonna be a grandpa you know? oh he said this grandpa, yesterday you know like, he said this to the kids yeah. yesterday it was so cute yeah mark is like the most sentimental person ever he was talking <laughs> about this moments. in the in the car with the kids and he's like and then one day you're gonna make me a grandpa and then- <laughs> but that's a superpower yeah. i would argue that oh, is I love such that. a superpower because i i think that yeah, the the things that we naturally attach ourselves to as far as value and bandwidth versus your ability to step outside of it and be like, I'm going to be a grandpa someday. Like that's I a, know. That's I'm a, excited that's about thing. all stages. Um, some yeah. people wrote us questions, uh, slipped into the DMs for us guys. And I think right. a very natural one is um, just talking about relationships. Lots of people have said, what's the best marriage advice? How do you keep your relationship lasting with just the busyness, the kids' work life? They would love to hear a man's man's perspective on that. Um, And I think it's a really good one. Mark said to me this morning, you only just said to me this morning, um, we both woke up. He did not sleep well. I did. I could not fall asleep, and Mark woke up very early. He woke up at four, so we both couldn't sleep. We also had a, a little extra body in our bed today um, last night who had crawled in, um, and so neither of us slept well. And we were brushing our teeth, and we were talking about it just now. And I was like, uh, "Yeah, you said something about like we were both up worrying about things or thinking about things," and. Um, And I was like, oh, he was like, how did you get to sleep? And I was like, I just thought, why am I worrying about this? What is worrying going to do for me? And I was like, worrying is just thinking forward and getting anxious about something forward, which by the way, I'm just creating in my mind. It's not real. What what am I doing right now? I'm relaxing. I'm in my bed, in my warm house with my beautiful kids. And I've got all these sleeping, healthy children. And then I was out. Um, and Mark um, was talking about that this morning too, about sort of anxiety and, and the things that come up. And it, I thought that was a really beautiful reflection, what you were saying this morning. And it kind of feeds into marriage and these self-imposed, the problems that we can add to marriage, the anxiety, the stress, the worry. I mean, look, we all, shit happens, right? We all have stuff happens and they're problems, but the majority, I think, of people's problems, our problems are made up in our heads, you know, and it's the way in which we react to 
challenges too. You know, it's just, and it was, it's cool to wake up this morning and realize, oh yeah, like what a waste of energy sitting there thinking about all these things that aren't real. They're just in our head. And the reality is, is everything's great right now in this moment. And we try to bring that into our relationship as much as possible. I think we've learned how to fight better, um, you know, and when we argue how to repair quicker, more efficiently, um, that's what I've been really trying to do and get better at. Um, Because most, I think, conflict that happens in a relationship when you're together in a loving relationship for so long it's they're stupid little things, you know, and it, it can, it's just becomes a, a waste in time of our energy. And we need a lot of energy to be, to show up for our kids and ourselves in a positive, consistent way that, you know, when a fight starts to happen now between us, I already know like, Oh, I'm like checking the clock. Like this can't last for more than five minutes. You know, this is, this is dumb already, you know, already thinking about what's the way out of this. What's the quickest way to resolve this. Um, I'm a big like waving the white flag guy in a fight. Um, so that's, my, <laughs> that's my <laughs> Teresa pulls out her briefcase a, and uh, yes. all of her documents. Well, and then she starts, I think Eric and I can up. relate. We <laughs> lawyer up. We like have our dot points. I will be, I, I won't let it go. Until and Mark, Mark and I are like, yeah, cool. <laughs> Mark's like, peace, peace. I give up. And I'm like, oh, let me tell you why. Boom, 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 boom. I've like <laughs> remembered every little word or thing said or body change, like body movement change that I was like, and that speaks to this particular point. And uh, <laughs> I know. And it's, ex- and that, it's like, oh my God. It, it, at this point, it's like, you know, we're, we're teammates forever, you know? And when you're forever teammates, it's like, yeah, you got to get good at resolving conflict efficiently and quickly, you know? Um, and yeah, that's, it's, it's been, it's been fun getting better at that. You know, I think we are getting better at that. And I think it makes the quality of our lives so much better. Um, yeah, but it sometimes is really intense with the briefcase and all the <laughs> um, I keep it close by my side. <laughs> yeah, you uh, do. Totally. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's the biggest one is like getting good at resolving conflict. Like looking at it, like you know, I don't know. I, that thing of once you start fighting, you're both already responsible you know no matter what you're fighting about once you're in a fight you're both contributing to it not being so great you know it's like and once you're in that state it's i think it's really useful to realize okay now we're both in it we're both kind of uh you know getting down and dirty and it doesn't matter what you're fighting about you know now that you're simply just fighting um you know it's like okay how are we going to get out of this what's the best way to get out of this to hear each other you know to try to understand each other's perspective and and then repair you know this is a fresh topic because we got into a really big fight last night. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was just reading what that was. I was like, I'm just going to not respond and see what mm-hmm. was said next. Yeah, um, really did. Well, we talked a lot about this in the, the first podcast yeah. that I did with you guys, which was like yeah. when we first started dating, like we fought in a way that was unhealthy from both sides. And I think that we have worked really hard to approach that with more love and respect. But I think maybe the most important element of that is like the fearless authenticity of who we are just to be able to be like, yeah, I fucked up or yeah, this is something that I'm doing that's selfish or whatever that is and just own it. And I think as we talk about parenting too, like that's the thing that I most want to instill in my kids is just the fearless authenticity of like, this is who you are, embrace it. 
and having that strength of identity to not be pulled into things, trying to be something that they're not or put on a face to be cool or whatever those things are. I think that's completely applicable to uh, us as adults when we're in situations, especially when we're in a relationship, but also in in fighting is to be like, this is who I am. Here's the great parts. Here's the bad parts. I'm going to fight to make these better. And then we're going to find a way to have resolution and move on. Um, I think that the the simplest answer to that question for me, which I really love, because I think that you guys have it in a really special way. And I think that Sarah and I do is, which is just the simplicity of being a champion and a cheerleader for the people that you love, which is that no one gets more excited about Sarah's successes than me. And I, I get to talk about like all the things that she has going on. And I genuinely feel so um, in awe and proud of um, the person that she is, the mom that she is, the friend that she is, the author that she is, um, the platform that you guys have built with all these amazing people that, that tune in to, to the show. Um, watching American Made, like I just remember being blown away by mm. what an artist that she is. I told her I'm her number one fan. I think I'm a number two you fan. Are, Teresa, you are. <laughs> You're the number no, one. And, and I, but I acknowledge like how that that's not the norm, right? That so much ego is driven in and, and competitiveness and that you can, she, she sent over your audition for the thing that, that you guys both auditioned yeah. for. And I just so acknowledge like what a fucking beautiful friendship that they can say, this is something special that we both would love to do, but also like, let's share in it. Yeah, I know. Me too. I felt so good. And it's just like easy and natural for us to just be like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Like, look at what you did with yeah. this. Like, I'm like, wow, oh, I'm getting ideas so cool. from what Sarah did. That I loved how she played that. She was so yeah. good in that. <laughs> yeah, it's so important. Yeah, that's that's the main thing that I'm seeing so much now is just your ability to to champion the people that you love. And, and Sarah's so supportive, like, you know, I'll go to work and come home and she'll be like what happened today <laughs> um, i'm like give me the guy she gets so it, <laughs> she gets so into it and it's you know it's that's um it's such a comforting partner a thing to say is that mark said it which is your partner for life like that's such a grounding and foundational stability that that makes the other stuff um Navigable. Well, I think also when you like are with somebody for so long, you really so long. You really <laughs> you got us it's been forever. so long. We've been together for eighteen years. <laughs> wow. Like it's a long time. And wow. amazing. I look it's at incredible. I look at that and I go like, you know, I see him now. How I don't know. However many years it's been that I've been able to see this, but like I can see when he is having a hard time or if he's, I can see when he's carrying stress and he's not somebody who anyone else can really tell. Like no one could really tell that he's carrying anything, but I could tell. It could literally be the way he grabs a bottle out of the cabinet and I'm like, oh, are you? <laughs> Are you, are you, do you need to go surfing? <laughs> I think you should go surfing. <laughs> you know, it's like just knowing what your person needs and just like offering it up. Like, you know, maybe you should go do a workout or a sauna or cold plunge or like go jump in the ocean or whatever it is. And like, I know you're going to feel so good afterwards. And um, all of those things involved. Water, I know. Just you're just like, you're such a water baby. You are. Uh, and, um, go surf, do a cold plunge, get in the shower. Like, it's all just like send the so dolphin weird. back to its home. But I think like, like relationships that I watched growing up, like as, you know, a kid and I was so intertwined with so many relationships around me because I was a preacher's kid. So like I saw a lot of like families and dynamics and stuff because I was just at the church all the time. Right. And so I think looking back on that now, I noticed there was a lot of like ignoring of what your partner needs or ignoring like when things come up or passive aggressiveness or that sort of like not really being tuned in and like tapping out or one person always has to be right. And the other person has to like bake themselves small for the other person to shine. And, you know, it's, it was an unbelievable learning opportunity because I think I also did so much of like the parts that I don't love. Like I did that in my earlier years of in a relationship, but I definitely think that in this relationship with Eric, I've been able to learn like, things that are the opposite of that and tuning in, like what a difference it makes when you tune in with your partner, when you really go like, I want 
to know like how you feel today on so for so many reasons, you know, but mainly because I want you to feel good. I want you to feel your best self. And how can I help? How can I be a vehicle for that? And like, is there anything I can do? Or maybe what I can do today is just be is like, love it, like what loving and, you know, and here and present. And anyway, I just think like when you're together for a long time, you can either go two ways, you can go, I'm going to tap out and ignore. Um, and then the other is just like the either, you know, it's either like ignoring or it's tuning in. And so mm. I don't know, that's been like an amazing reflection for me over our relationship over the past 18 years is just um, seeing that from both sides of us, me learning from you, seeing you do that for me, and then also being able to do that for you, which I think is so helpful. And being each other's best friend, no matter what, no matter what I'm going through, can always come back, be wrapped up in his arms and just like know that my person got me. He got me. Like I'm not in this alone. That is the most wonderful thing about doing life. And I feel like you also get that from your friends, from your best friends, yes, from those people true. who, you know, there's like-minded people where it just feels easy. And I, I've been using the word easeful so much lately. But I love knowing that I've just got my person there always to go through everything. And it's just such a, such a comfort. Um, and I, you know, in my younger, in our, you know, relationship, my younger years, I definitely put the kids first, a hundred percent. Like they were, they were the everything. And then re my relationship, my marriage, came second to meeting the needs of the kids. And I feel like we've done a really good job at prioritizing the relationship, the foundation, the trunk of the tree. Um, so that the branches are strong, the children are strong, they're happy, but the foundation um, feels really rock solid. And that wasn't always the way in our relationship that we had a few early wobbly years. And it's, it's beautiful to grow deeper and deeper in love. So many people talk about the butterflies at the beginning of the relationship and, whoa, it was just so powerful. And then kind of slip into this mutual respect stage of the relationship. And whilst we have the mutual respect, I have the deep love that I'm even more attracted to you now. It gets like, it gets deeper. Mark's hot. Yeah, Mark's he's hot. hot. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much. Man. <laughs> I, appreciate I mean, he definitely <laughs> spends a lot of time on his skin routine. His regimen is very detailed and it's beautiful. And it's, I can tell his skin is, guys, he really has the best skin. Thank you, baby. <laughs> um, Eric also um, loves his skin. So just uh, throw that yes, out there. He loves, love uh, loves the Osa yeah, Beauty loves regimen. Ursa Major. Yes. Yeah, I, Sarah, Sarah gave me very expensive uh, Ursa Major and Osea face stuff yes. and I'm like oh this is what this is supposed to feel like I'm here for it yeah yeah it's amazing yeah wait Shout guys out. I want to say one thing because this is listening to all of us talk and you know talking about relationship and then talking about friendship is it is so important it is so beautiful and it is so beautiful our friendship and I was just thinking like how this podcast and what you guys have created is a big friend for so many people. You know, it's this best friend for so many folks. And I was teaching a class in Sydney and I shared this with you, Sarah, and with you, babe. And I think you knew about this, Eric, but this, this woman came who's a big Daisy and just literally this podcast saves her life, you know, um, going through the worst postpartum depression. And it's just so amazing. You guys, like the people that I meet who are fans of this podcast and how this podcast is like having one big best friend for so many people and how it has helped people during times of real dark times, really hard times. Um, is so beautiful because it is so important. It's like what you listen to is effectively what you become. Yeah. So right? true. And, you know, and, and your music and then your podcasts and 
that influence that it has on you. And then the people that you have right beside you, you know, and what they're telling you, you know, and what you're listening to from them affects you. And it, it, it develops you and it shapes you. And I think, you know, having the friendship that we have with each other is so awesome, especially with the industry that we're in. And it is so beautiful to watch you guys genuinely care about each other and your wins. And you can, you know, audition for the same thing and genuinely be okay and want the other person to get the role. Like it would make you almost just as happy or vice versa. It's so cool because, exactly. you know, a, a lot of stuff in this industry is so hard that we have to navigate and how it affects your self-esteem and your self-worth. And um, look, there are a lot more harder jobs out there in the world. Um, <laughs> but I think it's just so great to have what we have for each other um, with sometimes the things that we're up against in this, in this industry as well too. But yeah, this podcast is, it's a friend for so many people and it's really beautiful. And I, and I, that's the, I mean, that's so spot on and I'm going to piggyback that, which is to say like, we talk about um, your peers and the role they play in your life. And we see echoed behavior your guys's fearless, authentic approach to life and to motherhood and all the things that you discuss on the show that I'm listening to and I find myself in tears on the 10 freeway driving to work. Like half the reason that I'm sure Mark can say the same thing. Half the reason we're in the business of telling stories is that we can, we have the ability to make people feel less alone in the world. And this is that. Like you think about the stuff that you guys have tackled on this podcast, the shit that people don't talk about, especially with any kind of authenticity. And you're doing that. You're making like this beautiful group of people that you share this podcast with, like your daisies, we're all feeling less alone in the world. Like that's a remarkable thing and should be articulated. Especially when we tell stories about how we broke people's toilets and because we had to go poo <laughs> <laughs> in the first oh few God. minutes of being in someone's house. That was, that was a couple weeks ago. So episode many where I, I told that story. <laughs> Are we allowed to ask a question about Mark and the IV treatments? Or is that oh, IVF? We're talking about oh, my podcast? God. IVF? I prepped him for this. I was like, you might have to tell Ooh. the story. I was like. Okay, so fearless authenticity. Here comes Here fearless go. authenticity. Oh. Let's hear. Can we hear Mark's story about IVF? <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. God I mean, oh, God. So what is that? You're in the process. And just to logistically, you have to like. You have to put Jack sperm off. into a, a, a th- yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I got to so describe I, the space. I'll just say why he had to do this. So you have to, the man, the man has to deposit the sperm, obviously, to make embryos. And I had some eggs frozen when I was younger. And now they're asking Mark to deposit the sperm so we can make some embryos. Um, and we rolled up at the same time on the same day for this appointment. Uh, I went off to get my bloods and Mark went off to a little room down the hall. Yes, this was, this was also my sperm could be analyzed. Okay. So I, I'm already going into this thing. Like it was first thing in the morning. I haven't even had my morning cup of coffee. I hadn't even gone to the bathroom yet. Okay. <laughs> we were like a little bit late and like rushing there. And, um, it was all a lot also because I don't like getting my blood taken. It's a really big deal for me. I just, I can't, it's a fucking, it doesn't like needles at all. No needles. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we get in there and we both walk into the space and the nurse is like, okay, do you want to do that thing? first or do you want to get your blood taken <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> you're like hello the levels of like awkwardness is it's just so much anyway um we quickly determine probably it's best if i go do that um and not get my blood taken first if in case i faint or i can't handle it or whatever <laughs> um so i get my little <laughs> bag with my cup and my instructions 
Yeah. <laughs> what are the instructions? What do they say in the instructions? You'd be like, get it, like, get it all in there. Get, don't Stop. get anything else from the outside world into the cup. Only get the thing that you need to get into the cup into the cup. Um, <laughs> And but so, then remember they awkwardly sort of tried to see if I wanted to go in there. They were like, and you could also <laughs> go into the room, yeah. but no other bodily fluids than his. So yeah. I was like. Yeah, and I was like, what? okay, well, no, then just get out of here then. What are you talking I about? I was shepherded I mean- into the room and we were standing in there <laughs> awkwardly with the nurse and she was like, so you can't do the bodily fluids. And I was like, okay, so I can't obviously <laughs> like, put some saliva near the penis okay so then what i had to do i, I just used my hand which would have been great, uh, which would have been great. If, if there were other bodily fluids could have been introduced into this fantastic. scenario we would have been i winning. was like bright red. So, i left i was like you're doing this on your own i'm not like if i can't help you very much yeah. then i'm, I'm just gonna stand here and i'm just watch. gonna watch you like what <laughs> So I was like, I'm okay. out. I'm, so, I go into the like, waiting room. You Well, yeah, you go into the waiting room. And so now clock is fucking ticking. Psychological warfare <laughs> has begun. Because <laughs> now I'm like under the clock. Okay. And like, it, let's be honest. Yeah, I, you know, we guys, you got this dialed in. You should be a machine, you know, we could get this. Give me two minutes. We're good. Right. But then there's this like weird thing already in my head. It's like, well don't be too fast. You know, you want to give it, maybe take <laughs> a few more minutes, right? Cause I'm all now, and I'm, I'm setting myself up for failure here because now I'm already just thinking that some, they're concerned about the amount of time that I'm going to be in this room. Right. Like I'm, I'm now yeah. <laughs> in the headspace of like all the nurses and the other people in the waiting room. And then my wife who's like, you know, by so, the way, texting Sarah, like he's in there now. <laughs> like, woo, he's just yeah. gone in to like, we're having a text war. <laughs> I determine, I determine like five minutes that that's solid. Like that's respectable. It's like, I can get the job done in a good amount of time, but I wasn't too fast. So I, uh, you got to put like, uh, there's a, a chair in the corner and you got to put, um, like tissue paper down on the chair to sit down on the chair you can't, can't. feel like you know <laughs> ass on the chair so i'm like putting my tissue paper there um and like there's a janky television and like bluetooth headphones and i'm like all right i'm already in here like i'm this is like four minutes now right i'm like okay i'm not giving myself a lot of time to bog down with all these little details and like the setup um and I'm like, I'm not going to use the TV, bust out my phone and, uh, you know, pull something up um, and turn off the lights because it's just glaring, like fluorescent. horrible light in there. <laughs> um, but then I'm like, fuck, I can't, like, you can hear everything outside the door. You can hear like a pin drop and everybody talking. And I'm like, well, that's clearly why these fucking headphones are there, right? Like, so you can... I, Cause I'm, I, I play around with turning the volume up on my phone just a little bit, just to hear a little something. And it's like too loud. Um, <laughs> Meanwhile, he's getting texts from me being like, is everything okay? Like what's going on? Oh, this is like already 15 yeah. minutes by now. I'm like, come on. It's, yeah. Okay. So, okay. You're going to jump to the 15 minute mark, <laughs> which is like literally 15 minutes now. I'm like, this is fucked up. I hear her a guy who has come in and went into the room next to me and was out. No, I have point. got to tell you from my perspective, I saw this dude who looked like a frat guy come in, but he was like mid thirties, like ex frat guy, like big beefy, like cap to the side, came in, signed his name in, boom, so confident, went in, literally came out like three minutes later, a little like grin on his face. And I was texting Sarah like, oh my God. And Sarah's like, um, <laughs> Sarah's like, he was probably pre-gaming. He was probably like in the car, like For getting sure. ready, pre-gaming, came in, 100%. boom, boom. He literally came out yeah. with a smile on his face. Like, look at me go. Boom. So, okay. So there we go. You got a guy who's like in and out. I'm now 20 minutes. I'm fucking sweating bullets, you guys. I, nothing, nothing's doing the trick. There's nothing at all. 
and I'm starting to go into like sheer fucking panic at this point because I'm I still have to get my blood drawn as well. So <laughs> Annie needs to shit. I, and there's a di- there's a digital <laughs> clock. That's the best thing about it too. That's why I know I'm 20 minutes in. There's a clock with the red, just like red glowing numbers. So I get up you know, pants around my ankles, scoot over there, turn the fucking clock around <laughs> and get back in the chair. And I'm like, okay, forget it. I'm not looking at the time. Just get present. Just be here. And I FaceTime my wife. Who picks up. To let her know to check in. the in. waiting room. And I'm like, babe, I don't think this is going to happen. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm, it's like, and I'm clearly in distress. She is in the waiting room and decides, like a foot, a foot away she's from like, another woman who's like looking at me. Yeah, she's like, and I'm like, remember, no, no. remember when we were in the shower and da da da. And I started like whispering <laughs> to him. And I was like, just think about my. And I'm looking around at these this woman who's side eyeing me, like, what the fuck is this girl doing? I know. But it's on FaceTime, so I'm like whispering into the phone, like, and then I da da da. <laughs> and then I see him sort of quickly put the phone down. I'm like, oh, it's working. Like he's getting into yeah, it. Yeah, no, so sorry. The work. So, yeah, I was like, great, okay, cool, and also like awkward, like let's not do this in the you're in the waiting room. So I put it down. It's like starting to work, right? Um, and then quickly, meow, no. And at this point, I'm like, this is fucked up. It's a half hour, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I literally feel like I could cry. I'm like, this is this is a fucking disaster. So I, you know. Pants on my ankles, like I'm finally like, fuck it. Shuttle over to the wall and I read start reading the instructions about how to activate the fucking Bluetooth headphones <laughs> to work with the system. Okay. So I finally like and I have like oil on my fucking hands at this point. I'm like <laughs> trying to like get the fucking headphones connected. And it's like boop, 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 boop. and I finally have it connected to the screen. And I'm like, all right. I'm going to see what they got here then. And I open up the fucking drawer and you guys, it was all huge cops going into <laughs> dudes' mouths <laughs> and raping assholes. And it was all straight gay porn. Which is <laughs> great, but... Right, if that's your thing, it's totally great. But it's not my thing and already at this point like nothing's working and I like literally I'm like are you kidding me and I felt like his dick like completely <laughs> shriveled up and like went like turned I, inside uh, out it was like oh. yeah I was like I and I, at that point I just like just shut the drawer took some tissues started wiping the oil <laughs> off my hands and just claimed defeat um and i was and, still like let yeah. me come in there babe Teresa's texting me she goes oh my god oh my god he's leaving he's leaving the room hold on i gotta call you back i know i was like <laughs> what is going on but then i kept being like let me come in i'll come in and he was like no that's even worse no no we're done we yeah. are done yeah. so at that point i was you know yeah those were not the images that were gonna work for me and uh, I had to leave the room completely defeated. And the nurse, you know, <laughs> just we shared this look. And I was like, uh, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to come back. <laughs> she's like, oh, it's OK, sweetheart. And um, she's like, we're going to do the blood thing. I'm like, yeah, at this point, I'm like, you can fucking jab me with 18 needles. I don't care. <laughs> Drain all the blood from my body. Um, I've never had blood taking go so easily. I just sat down on the chair and like you're like didn't so care. defeated and out of it. Oh my um, god! <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I didn't know whether to pay for it. I was like, do I pay for? He didn't complete the task, so should I pay for this now or should I pay? And they were like, did he give sperm? I was like, he did. Well, no, but he no, we did yeah. come here for pre-paid. that. So do we? But yeah, we, <laughs> so awesome. So we prepaid, and so at the at checking out at the at the counter, um, I was told, "Oh, you can do an at home deposit Ugh. and bring it in." And I was like, "Fucking motherfucker! I wish <laughs> we had done that from the beginning." Um, and so you know, I sheepishly take this brown paper baggie with my cup to like take home. Um, which is a whole other funny story. Just like driving back like two hours later with like my paper bag 
with of your sperm. My semen in a cup to like walk into the room and just like like here you go. Aww. Okay, bye. You're like, oh. the, 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 the happy the happy ending to the story is that his that spermy made two little healthy embryos that are sitting <gasps> that have Yay! been frozen. So they're sitting there on ice. So thank you, little spermies, and thank you for that experience and that oh story. Oh my god, that story! Thank you for letting me share. <laughs> that story crushed, absolutely crushed me. I was crying. Oh my god, in tears. Crying. Crying. <laughs> oh my god. Oh That's my god. So and good. also, like, what an amazing origin story for these next babies. Oh my oh god. Totally. god. Totally. <laughs> oh my. Little did you know. Yeah. yeah. You know. How much? How much work your dad had to put in. Wow. Yeah. It's it's so it's so wild. It is so wild. It's so wild. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, like, you know, where where Mark and Eric were kind of leading us right before the sperm story was you were talking about the daisies and the community and we actually went out to our daisies to say if you want to wish us anything for our 100th episode like we want to hear your voices we want to hear from the community from our friends um and we have so many so many people did they all um sent beautiful voice messages so sarah do you want to start playing any or do you like yes i became a mum about six months after prairie was born so the mama days has been going on the whole time i've been a mum uh which has been fantastic something to really help me through this change. Um, my favorite episode has to be Surprise Twins. I go back and listen to that sometimes because it's just such a wild story and so inspired at the same time. Um, I've got an IVF transfer next week. So oh. hopefully there's some, you know, baby dust for baby number two. Thanks. Oh, oh my god, that makes me cry. That's for Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. Oh my okay, gosh. Tez, do you have Thank another you. one? Yes, I do. Hi, Sarah and Teresa and Mark and Eric. My name's Gabby Goddard. Um, I am a student midwife based in Newcastle in Australia. And I'm also an actor. Um, and I am a dog mama and hopefully one day a mama. I am love the mother days for its intersection between spirituality and motherhood and um, acting. I find it all just, it's such a unique niche and really interesting and engaging. And you guys are such wonderful gifted hosts. And um, I think really add a lot of uh, love to the world, you know, just energetically. And I uh, was going to ask whether you might be interested in either sharing your astrological information if you know it beyond just your sun sign or if you don't know whether you would be willing to share your birth details with me so that I could as an amateur astrologer (laughs) give you some information to share with the daisies yes so cool right up my gosh and we love it we love it that (laughs) made me teary you the love it made, me too, too. it made me teary it's so sweet it's so sweet oh my gosh God. and exactly what we just talked about like you guys are bringing so much love to the world oh. yeah. and that's echoed right there oh my gosh that's so sweet uh here is another one hi i'm carly and i'm from canberra australia Firstly, congratulations on your 100th episode. What a milestone. Uh, I shared my love and gratitude for you both in a letter I gave Mark back in January this year, and I meant every word. Motherhood is a wild ride, and when we share stories and get real and vulnerable, it reminds us that we are not alone and that we are all human having the same experiences. And that's exactly what the Mother Days podcast achieves every week. You have both brought so much laughter, warmth, inspiration, and hope into my life after having my son in 2022, and I'm so grateful. So from one mama to another, thank you. Please come to Australia if and when you tour so I can give you both a massive hug, sending so much love. Oh, oh my god, I'm totally oh, crying. So I, high. That was so, so random. Beautiful. We had not listened to any of these ahead of wow. time, so I had no idea it was the same person. That That's is incredible, you guys. guys this is why we do this. I know. Oh. This is so life affirming. So much love to him. So much love. This one is from Amy Roberts. 
Hello, hello, Teresa and Sarah. Congratulations on 100 episodes. That's absolutely epic. This is Amy from Adelaide. Teresa, I actually met you on a Mark's workshops and I introduced myself oh. as a Daisy. I have been a fan from the beginning. I love your podcast. I love your solo episodes. They have me in fits of laughter. <laughs> uh, and you're also just both so beautiful and transparent and down to earth and you always speak your truth which is just so beautiful um and I, I love your guests they're always incredible um my request would be for you and the girls from broad ideas rachel and olivia to come and do a live show in adelaide yeah. to show them where you're from and how awesome it is that would just be epic um congratulations again and here's to your next 100 woo Oh, Yay! Yes! Yes! Road trip. Road trip. I love this idea. Definitely. Definitely needs to happen. <laughs> okay. Let me go to Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. Hello, hello. Happy 100th episode to the Mother Days from your Daisy Chelsea in Mildura, Victoria. I find it really weird calling myself Daisy out loud because I have a daughter named Daisy and when I used to play the podcast in the car, she would always sit there going, Mum, why do they keep saying my name so much? <laughs> <laughs> I love your solo everyday life episodes because like Tez, I have four children except I had two girls first, then two boys. Aww. And I'm done having babies now. And I was actually quite shocked by what a big transition that was and how much grief I went through during that transition. And even though I know you two ladies aren't there yet, I was wondering if you would touch on that subject of moving through to the next stage of motherhood when the having babies is done and we just get to focus on raising the children we have and accepting that that part of our life is sadly over. I love the podcast and I love you too and thank you so much for everything. That is love so that. sweet. I love Chelsea, that. Chelsea, we will totally do an episode on that because I think it, with you saying that, there was so much that came up in that moment because I've thought about it so much over the last few years. Um, so we'll do an episode and we'll touch on that. Mm, absolutely. Um, okay, this is Marissa. Hi, Sarah and Teresa. I'm a longtime listener of the Mother Days and also got to attend your amazing Daisy Dream Circle a few months ago. Um, and I truly find this community to be so uplifting and kind, especially during my current trying to conceive journey and a pregnancy loss that I went through back in November. Listening to your interviews with other incredible women and business owners and families, as well as just both of your willingness to be so vulnerable about your own journeys with motherhood and pregnancy loss has really been so inspiring for me and so many of us. So I really do just want to thank you for your openness to publicly talk about such a wide array of heavy hitting topics on your platform. The question I have for all of you is because both of your families have been close friends for so long and your children are similar ages, what has been the best parenting advice or something you have found to be really helpful that you've received and learned from the other couple over the years? Thank you and congratulations on your 100th episode. That is gorgeous. Do you want to answer that? I know that watching you two parent has been like one of the greatest gifts of parenting ever because I get to see um, how open and thoughtful and beautiful you guys are with your kids. And from the first moment that like our kids were babies and we were together in these like circles and watching you guys, the way that you talk and approach your baby and just your you know, very out of the box for me and the way that I grew up way of thinking and communicating was like opened my whole world up to a way of like parenting that I'd only really read about in books, but sometimes reading about it in a book is hard to apply it in your practical life when I'm a person who needs someone to like act something out for me, for me to really grasp it. That's the kind of learner that I am. So watching you guys with your kids. And even as when Bodhi was like a teeny tiny baby and you're talking to him about, you know, okay, I'm going to give you milkies now. And you're just like communicating in this way where, um, you just, it felt so connected already. And, uh, I just loved it. And, and that was like one of the very first things that I learned from you guys that just, I think really helped me to become the mom that I am today. It's funny. It's the same thing. It's the, it's the feeling is so mutual. It's that's what we felt and saw with you guys, you know, and it was so affirming. It was like, Oh yeah, cool. This is, we're doing something right here. And then our willingness to talk about it, you know, and to like check in about 
what are you guys doing about discipline and screen time? And, you know, and it's just been awesome, like a good sounding board for all of us. And I think we've helped parent all our kids together, you know, um, and that's so cool. It's been so mm, cool. You, you know? guys are such heart forward parents with yeah. your kids, like so exactly. much love. And um, it leads with love. It always leads with love. So um, that's really beautiful. And I appreciate that question. I Thank you, it. Marissa. Thank you, Marissa. Should we finish with Eric Jacobs? <laughs> Great. Happy 100th, ladies. Eric Jacobs here from a wintry Adelaide. Uh, just sending a congratulations. I love everything you guys do, especially the manifesting and the spirituality stuff. Uh, wow. Mark Webber, you're my hero. I think you're the father of the year. I love everything about you, brother. Happy 100th. Can't wait to see the next 100 episodes and look forward to the 200th. Thanks, guys. Bye. Oh, <laughs> this is Eric. Okay, so this guy's Love name you, is Eric. Eric, and babe, Eric came to your. He came to one of of my classes, classes in Adelaide, guy. and he's got three boys or three. Oh my! He's gosh. got three kids, and I think he's a single dad, a single dad to three. Wow! Yeah! Wow! Beautiful. Yeah! You know what? That's amazing. Oh yeah! I'm so glad you did one more. I know. Oh, oh, so sweet. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Um, Guys, to anybody that so sent us a voice beautiful. memo and we didn't get to play it, I am uh, just want you to know that we're going to listen to every single one of them and we love you guys and we're just so grateful that you're here and this really is so special for us to do. Um, we do it from a place of passion and um, it's just, it, it feels so good to connect with all of you and we plan on doing more of that in the future. So thank you guys and happy 100 and Tez, I love you so much much and thank I you for being you. the best sister and friend that anybody could ever have and I just feel gratitude mm. for you every single day oh my gosh me too she does. Oh, me too me too well, I love you guys, I love so, you guys. Much. I'm like, <laughs> so much ready to hop in the car let's do it right we go right like, away together I know, I, know, I, know. <laughs> I know I'm like let's go there let's go to Idaho let's do it. screw work uh, it doesn't matter screw everything yeah. let's just be together I know. as a person that doesn't fully understand what manifesting means I think we need to manifest RVs okay yes. Yes. let's that's do it works. yeah that's how it works yes. it has, it's how it works yes. yeah we got you. Manifesting RVs <laughs> and then a tour. Tours in Australia, tours yes. in North America, tours We're in Europe. In. Go back to Switzerland. Yes, please. You guys it. can do the podcast and we can continue this, This, as they said so well, like you're bringing this much love to the world Aww. making people feel less alone. So you guys awesome. are incredible and I love you. Watch, it's all going to happen too. Aww. It's going to happen. Right. And we can bookmark this 100th episode and be like in our RVs. <laughs> and this was the beginning. And be like, That's right. <laughs> no, oh, my oh, gosh. I well, love you. Guys. We couldn't guys. do it without you guys. you guys. We really couldn't. And Sarah, you're my best friend in the entire world, and I love you, my sister for Same. life. Same. Um, sister all right, for thank life. you, Daisies. Thank you so much. This community means everything. And happy 100. Happy 100. You know, congratulations. You guys. At this point, you know where to Congrats. find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, <laughs> or wherever you listen to podcasts. We love you, Daisies. Bye. Bye.